This is Bertolt Brecht. He was born in 1898 in Bavaria, Germany, and he died in 1956, age 58. He was one of the most influential playwrights and directors of the 20th century, and Brecht's ideas have become an essential part of the style and language of contemporary theatre. His most famous plays are Mother Courage and Her Children, Life of Galileo, The Caucasian Chalk Circle, The Good Person of Sichuan, and The Resistible Rise of Arturo Ui. As well as plays, Brecht also wrote a vast catalogue of 2,000 poems and songs. Here are some key ideas that Brecht initiated and used throughout his work. The alienation effect. This was from the German word Verfremdung, which translates to mean making strange or alienating. It's sometimes called the A effect or V effect from the original German word. The alienation effect is an idea that encourages the audience to question what they're seeing. Perhaps they're watching a moment or a scene in a play that feels familiar or safe. Brecht wanted audiences watching his plays to challenge what they're seeing and to think about it. Consider the opposite of the verb to alienate. It would be to join or to welcome. And this is the opposite of what Brecht wanted to do to his audience. It shouldn't feel safe, cosy or comfortable. It should be striking, antagonistic and challenging. Another way of considering the alienation effect is about prioritising the audience thinking rather than feeling. His plays have plenty of emotion in them, but he didn't prioritise this because that's what naturalism sets out to do. Naturalism aims to have the audience feel what the characters feel and empathise with them. Brecht wanted to continually interrupt this instinctive human empathy for a character and shift that to make the audience think about what the characters were doing and why they were doing it. Then the play could be a part of bringing about change in the world. Epic theatre. Brecht used epic theatre to contrast dramatic theatre. Dramatic theatre has the audience watch a story that engages them emotionally and the issues are resolved by the end of the evening. Epic theatre doesn't have this neatness. Epic theatre aims to confront the audience plant questions and problems in their mind and inspire them into action to bring about change in society and in the world. Brecht said of these two types of theatre, the dramatic theatre spectator says, yes, I have felt like that too, just like me. It's only natural, it'll never change. I weep when they weep, I laugh when they laugh. The epic theatre spectator says, I'd never have thought it. That's not the way, that's extraordinary, hardly believable. It's got to stop. I laugh when they weep. I weep when they laugh. Epic theatre is less about sharing an experience with an audience. It's more about the audience coming to grips with things. Gestus. Gestus is a gesture or movement shown by an actor to demonstrate a moment or attitude from a character. It was a form of physical expression to show the relationships between people in society. A successful use of gestus should encapsulate these key relationships in a single snapshot. Brecht would sometimes ask his actors to preface each guest or action with a small comment, such as, this is how the landlord pays his peasants their wages. Or look at how Mother Courage defends her stock from demands for charity. This created a type of acting that was playful, but importantly, it was objective. It's clear, demonstrated, and can be easily understood. Brecht and his actors would study photographs from rehearsals to make sure that every moment of gestus was clear and effective. Those are three of the primary ideas in Brecht's theatre. But how did he use these ideas? What did he do in his work? And what was the style of it? Check out the next video to see the methods and devices he used. Thanks for watching. If this video helped you, please give it a like. Do check out these other videos and subscribe. And if you want to support what I do on the channel, you can click on the link in the video description. All the best.